Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Ink It Up tutorial, we're going to create cards featuring the Christmas to Remember bundle and my favorite stamp set in the holiday catalog, Thinking Thanks and Peace. I'm going to show you the concept of these cards and you're going to learn lots of techniques along the way. The concept for this card is that we're just stamping onto designer series paper. This is just a piece of designer series paper. The background it is alcohol ink based background but it's actually designer series paper and it and then I'm die cutting or die cut at the bottom with different layers of gold foil and shaded spruce here and then here these little pine cones are featuring a new celebration paper and that's this item here that you can earn for free I'll explain all this along the way this one's called bedazzling okay the concept for this card the Peace on Earth card is featuring this stamp set here, Thinking Thanks and Peace, the Peace on Earth stamp with real red shaded spruce, again for the pine needles. This one has some other foil. This is this would be like, I think that would be copper foil, but we're going to be using gold foil for these cards because that's what I took out and then bedazzling there. And then what I did here, I stepped it up for this one. We're going to make, we're just going to do the two cards, but I stepped up this type of card here. And what I did for this is I also stamped it in the same similar way, but I embossed the background. All right. So let's get started. And I'm going to let you vote on which card you want to do first, because then if we run out of time, I can do a part two. So if you came on, do you want to do Holly Jolly or Peace on Earth? Just write Holly or Peace. And the first comment I see will be, and then I'm going to show you where I got this from. This one here, this, I'm just opening this up because it's part of a mega suite. So first I'll just talk about thinking thanks and pieces on page six. Okay, Lorna voted first for Holly, so we're going to do this. Then, then after that we'll do peace. We'll get to do both hopefully. All right, 62, on page 62 is the thinking thanks and peace stamp set. And the mega suite, this is a mega suite. You're not going to believe this suite here. I just had the page open. It's called Painted Christmas Mega Suite. And it's not called Mega Suite, but I'm calling it a Mega Suite because when there's more than one stamp set in something, I call it a Mega Suite. So you see how I'm using the seasonal labels dies. That's where we're going to get put the Holly Jolly on there. I'm using this whole entire bundle, Christmas to Remember bundle, with the pine cones and this this type of stuff. Okay, so that's that's where this is coming from. I'm not even using this designer series paper. I'm using designer series paper. We're going to make this card from the annual catalog. And the reason I wanted to use this is, it, this is a little trick. You might not know about this trick, but when you, when you go, if you're trying to figure out what a coordinating color is, like I really, okay, let me go back. When in this suite of, pro, in this painted Christmas suite, one of the colors is garden green. And that's not my favorite kind of green, right? It's not my favorite color of green. So I was like, I was like, I don't want to make pine cones in green, in garden green. I am mean, pine needles or pine, you know what I'm saying? The pine. I didn't want to die cut that. This green doesn't make me happy. So it doesn't make me as happy as shaded spruce. So then I said, there's a little trick though. If you, if you want to use, so this is shaded spruce. And if you want to use a color and you're not sure what, what paper, because Stampin' Up! paper goes with that color, just type, just go to our website, go to my website here, go to the store and type in shaded spruce. And the only paper that came up that's current is this paper. Actually, that's how kind of this idea sprung because I said, oh, wow, I can use this paper. I just got this paper. I've been waiting for months for this paper. And I said, I can use this because it matches my favorite green or my favorite Christmas green. I have a lot of, maybe it's not my actual favorite green, but it's my favorite Christmas type of green. So I'm going to show you start to finish how to make that card. So what, what I'm showing you now is expressions in ink paper. Okay, and we don't have to make, we're not making this background from scratch. I need to show you this paper so you can see what I mean. It's going to look like you did it all from scratch, like you're the expert here. And you did all this alcohol ink technique. But no, you don't have to do that yourself. This paper, this is from the annual catalog, by the way. This paper has it all done for you. When I get to the page here, this is the page I decided to use for this card. I'm going to keep that page out. But you can use any of these pages. You could use this page for the type of card I'm showing you where you can use like stamp on this part of the designer series paper. So I was like, oh, 
this expression is unique, has shaded spruce in it. So then that's kind of how my whole card idea came about. See, I could use this piece here. See, I can't. I could use this piece here too for what I'm showing you. I actually could use this piece, but I wanted to have a piece that had a section of white. But this is going to work for me in the future. It's just gorgeous. And this is going to work for me. So I'm going to make like a load of these cards. I'll show you kind of other, some other things I started doing with it. All right. So with that said, and this, I think I showed you that piece already. All right. Let me clear off my table. We're going to get the trimmer. So now what you need to do is I've already done this part. So you're, I'm just going to do, this is an eighth inch bigger. This is my matting. I'm going to take this part and do, show you how to do this part. So what we need is the paper trimmer. And if you're new to my channel, I'd like to get really intense and show you like a lot of steps. But I also wanted to have a few things done ahead of time. So we're going to go ahead and trim this four inches. Let's use, let's use this side of the paper because it has just a cooler design, right? So we're just going to trim it four inches by five and a quarter because it's our card layer. Four inches, right? And we're going to do one, we're going to make two of them at the same time just so we have two in case we stamp two. Okay, five and a quarter. See that? You have a cool section to put your sentiment, right? Like that. And then you have a cool section to put your little pine needles. Okay, four by five and a quarter. So then the next layer, the shaded spruce layer, is just going to be an eighth of an inch bigger than that. Right, the one that I've already cut. So if th this is four inches, then this is four and an eighth, right? I could write this down if I have a pen here. Okay, so we'll just do. So D D this is going to be, we're going to call this the Holly Jolly card. Holly, don't mind my writing. Jolly card. So we got five. Okay, we're going to do length times width. So we're going to do five and a quarter. So we're going to do one fourth by four inches. And that would be your DSP. This is your DSP. Okay. And then this is going to be your shaded spruce or just your cardstock layer. Cardstock. I'm just going to write spruce so you know what I'm talking about, that I'm talking about a color. Cardstock shaded spruce. And so that's going to be five and three eighths because you're going one eighth of an inch bigger by four and one eighth. Okay. So that way, if you can follow along, because so many people ask me, where are your notes? Where is your PDF? Blah, blah, blah. You know what? I don't have time to always go back and make those. So I'm just writing it right here. So this is where you get the information right here. So now you're going to um, go ahead and you can mount this. You can go to mount this together. So get your, get your seal, right? This is seal plus. I like seal plus personally. Because look at the little ridges in the adhesive. Pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to mount that. And I'm mounting it upside down like that. Not upside down, but I'm putting that on the top. So it looks like you've done all this alcohol ink. Now, there, there is alcohol ink techniques you can learn about on YouTube, too. So, like, if you want to make this type of paper yourself but not the foiling part the foiling is a specialty paper and it's better to buy that I think because foiling is very difficult okay now this one is a real red card base okay so to, to make your card you get your piece of real red we're gonna go ahead and make both card bases that we need at the same time so that you have them made right and so you're gonna take your yeah, aren't the pine cones gorgeous? What I'm doing now is I'm taking my Simply Scored, right, and a piece of real red cardstock, and I'm going five and a half. I have so much stuff stuck on this. See how many little pieces of pine cone I have stuck all over my... I was using this as my sort of like my lap desk, and I was poking things out of it, so it's five and a half because the paper is 11 inches across. So hopefully you can see all that. I'm just going to go to make both my card bases I need for both projects tonight at once. That was all we needed the scoring for. And if you're wondering, yes, you could have just used your trimmer to score at the same time. Because these trimmers come with a score too. They come with a, a, a scoring tool. But I'm not using that. I took mine off. And now I'm going to go five, uh, four and a quarter. 
Okay? Four and a quarter. Because the paper's eight and a half across. That's it. That's how to make your cards. It's as easy as that. We're done making the cards. We'll use them for both projects. And you can go ahead and take your spatula. I'm just using I'm just using a little spatula I have from Cricut. The other company. Another company. Look. It's very dirty. <laughs> you can see I use this spatula a lot. You can use a bone folder as well. All right, so we can go ahead and mount. We're going to go ahead and mount this. Now, wait till I show you the inside. That's going to be really cool too. So we're going to go ahead and mount this. The reason I can, why can I mount all this? I would never do this typically. I would never mount this. But because I always tell you, make sure you get everything right before you mount it. In this case, I'm not stamping right onto here. I'm adding these as embellishments. So because I'm adding these later with just glue and, uh, oops, what is it called? Glue and um, Stampin' Dimensionals. This talk about how strong this adhesive is, right? Because I'm using glue and Stampin' Dimensionals, I can go ahead and, and mount all this right now. Now here's how I did the inside of this card. So let's just make, let me sure I get this straight though. Let's get it straight. That's the, the only tricky part. I think I didn't get it straight. You know what, though? I'm not that hung up on it. All right, it's not quite straight, but I'm, oops, sorry for shaking everything. So here's what I did for the inside of this card. Check this out. You just put a piece of designer series paper. Cool, right? So I think I have one already made, made for us. Um, but no, I don't want to waste these. I would use one of these. I would use one. I don't, the reason I say I don't want to waste these is because these already have too much. These are too cool. We can put stuff behind them, right? Whereas this piece here is one of the pieces that didn't have much on it. So that's what I put as the inside of my card. I thought that looked cool. All right, so you got that. So you got that whole concept. Now let me write this down. And this is going to be the card itself. Card base, we're going to call it. And the card base is going to be when you're all done, you know, you're going to score it and all the stuff I showed you. And it's going to be four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, so that's called an A. So if you're not sure how to make an A2 card, that's an A2 card. Okay. So that's how you make it. So that's how we did everything so far. Now we're going to do the die cutting. Ready for this. So we, we have to use... Now, I have... I have used, my husband helped me, we did do a lot of dazzling diamonds die cutting and it was very tough to get, to get the pine needles out of this. I'm going to give you a trick to try to do it, but what I think was way easier and to make our lives easier, we're going to use just the gold foil and we're going to use this dazzling diamond, is it diamonds? I'm sorry, it's be dazzling, not dazzling diamonds, be dazzling, we're going to use be dazzling for our acorns because I just want to show you how easy this card is. And if I'm sitting there cranking like I did in, if you guys remember my butterfly series, oh my goodness, I was cranking so hard I warped my darn plates and everything. So just putting that over there for a minute and let's pull out the dies and talk about the dies. So you have this really cool, these are, this is all that comes in the set. You have these, these are the exact same, right? I, they're the same, they're just like the, the background of the pine cones. These are the foreground of the little pine cones. And this is the background and foreground of the pine cone. So that's, that's going to go here. So you, you make three sets at once. So you get like a set of one big pine cone and two little pine cones three times. And you can, I'm going to show you at the end of this video something that's going to blow you away. Like how I used this all together. Like on a background. Well, I didn't finish using it, but you should see the background I made with this whole thing. But I think that's kind of personally too much. So I wanted to cut it and get three out of one background. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take, we're going to put the gold back here. Then you do this one in my shaded spruce, right? And that's how you get this really cool effect. So we need our big one. We can't use our mini. We need our big stamp and cut and emboss. So, and I know it's going to shake a lot. Shaky shake. We're going to move this up some. My camera stand. And we're going to open up the big stamp and cut and emboss. If you look at starter kit ideas, this is something you could put in your starter kit. You could get this whole bundle for free. This Christmas to Remember bundle and this in your starter kit for $99. Because we, we're giving away free bundles during celebration. Where are my cutting plates? Cutting plates. 
I had everything here. Okay, here we need, so when you do your cutting plates, you look at, you can look at what it says here. It gives you like a really cool cheat sheet. So it says plat, place die cutting edge down. It says platform one, right? This is called a sandwich, die cutting sandwich. Then it talks about using this, you know, when you're doing thin dies, which these are called thin dies, you have to put cutting, you have to put plate two down. And then you have your two cutting plates, three and three. They're both number three. Okay, so that's your sandwich. That's all you need for your sandwich. So we're going to take our piece of gold foil. Gold foil's in the catalog. It's called gold, mm, I think it's called gold cardstock. So far I have cut, like I've cut the pine needles out of this. I've cut the pine needles out of cardstock. I've cut it out of all different kinds of foil, like brass, gold foil. Here's my gold, here's another piece of gold foil here. So it's free, it, it's, oh, this is brushed, I'm sorry, this is called brushed metallic cardstock. So you could use that as well. I'm just trying to reach around on my table and find the gold foil that I had sitting here. Here we go. So we're taking a piece. I, already, I like to cut things down in six by six sheets because it just helps me when I'm doing things in the die cutting machine. So when I get my die, when I get my brush metallic cardstock or when I get my cardstock, I just cut it all down because I'm always die cutting with it. I just cut it all down. So you see how I'm putting it in between the sandwich plates, in between plates number three? See how I'm doing that? Okay, if, if, I, if, you, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, please feel free to ask me because I, don't, I want you to understand how easy this is, how simple. You're just sticking this down, no tape needed, nothing, because it's not gonna slip and it pretty much cuts on the first try. I will probably go back and forth just once for good measure, but you really don't even need to because this cuts through the foil pretty good, the foil cardstock. And that's it, you put your sandwich on top and you crank it through. Okay, so just put that in. And the reason I'm doing it over that side is because I want to save this. You can use then you can use this for other things, like your acorns. I know. Why do I keep calling them acorns? You probably are laughing at me. Pine cones. You know why I'm calling things acorns? Is I'm in the middle of doing some fall projects, and there's these cute little acorn trinkets that are in the clearance section, and I bought a lot of them, and I'm using them. So like I was just had acorns in my mind. Okay, I said I could go through them another time, if I wanted to. I could have just went backwards back through it, but um, don't move anything. If you're going to go through another time for good measure, don't move anything when you do that because you don't want anything to slip. Okay? So now what you're going to do is just to check it before you take everything apart, I kind of check it by turning it upside down and I check it. Did it go all the way through? And it did. See how it went all the way through? If it didn't go all the way through, I would just go like this, right? Flip my sandwich back around and run it through without slipping, without everything slipping around. But it went all the way through. So now it's a matter of getting this all out. You're gonna watch me make a huge mess and it's no big deal, you're just gonna do this. Don't use your dye brush on foil like this because the foil will, it, it can scratch your, you know, unless you wanna use the dye brush on that side, that's okay. And you can also use your pokey tool. This is, this is called your take your pick tool. I'm gonna to call it a pokey tool if you wanna poke out some extra little bits. But look how easy this came out because I went through twice. If you don't go through twice, it's not going to come out easy. Let's not snip now because it's easier to snip when you see how you want to snip the small pine cones. So I find it easier to snip this later after I cut my shaded spruce pine cones because, or pine needles, pine, you know what I mean. This, this part, this part. I find, I find this one easier to snip afterwards because this is so big and you'll be able to see it better. So let's go ahead and use the, my, what I'm going to use for this is called my wax paper trick that my sister taught me. When you have thin dyes, it's a great trick to use. My sister Cindy, shout out to her. She taught me this so many years ago. We, we've been crafting in our family for years and years, um, way before I even became a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So we were, we were die cutting. So she taught me this trick. And it's just an easy way of releasing. Release me. It's an easy way of releasing your your metal dies. So what you're doing is, and I'm calling it the wax paper trick because it used to be called wax paper. Like now you can't even find wax paper anymore. Now they call it parchment paper and it's not as waxy as wax paper, right? It's just not as, ugh, there we go. It's not as gooey as wax paper, but it still does the same trick. So get a piece of parchment paper and you're gonna take your, you're gonna take your die and you're gonna put the piece of parchment paper, wax paper like this. So you're not, like you're putting it between your die and your paper that you're cutting. And this is, happens to be shaded spruce cardstock. Now, in this case, I may use a piece of painter's tape only because this is very slippery. 
if you want, you can use painter's tape. Even though you should only have to go through once, it's kind of slippery. It makes your die. So maybe take a little. So what you want to do is something like, make sure it's centered in there and just do something like that. You know, get it all, get it all to stay together. And then lay it down there just so it doesn't move too much. It's still going to, it's, it's going to stay together after your first run through because it kind of cements itself in there. I'm going to take the top plate now. This is plate three. Same sandwich as before, by the way. Same sandwich as before. So I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to go backwards. So that's what I'm doing. And I, I could, I could take the whole thing out and run it back through straight, but I'm just going to go backwards. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to push it and kind of go back this way. And then I'm going to do that check again to make sure it's good. So you may have questions like, why aren't you using adhesive sheets? And we'll use adhesive sheets for the next part of the tutorial. But right now, I found that I just like to glue these. I want them to be more 3D. And that's why I'm just using it with just, I'm going to be using glue for this part. So check this out. So we're, oh, we're going to test it. We should have tested it the way I was saying, just to make sure it cut all the way through. I'm pretty confident it did, but yes, it did. See, you're testing it that it cut all the way through. And it did, and you have to do the little wiggle, the wiggle. So, and then this piece, you just see that? It kept you from having to poke all the bits out because see how clean my die is? This works on all kinds of intricate dies. No poking all these little holes. Like it's all gone, it's done because you use this paper and it's just your, your die is easy to like get this out of, like easy to get these needles out. All right, so I think I'm gonna be good for now. We're, for, we're gonna do pine cones, pine cones in a couple minutes, but let's get these out. So again, I just sort of, I'm glad you like the tips. I could do honestly a whole series just on die cutting. I mean, it's just, there's so many tricks with die cutting. It, this looks like a hot mess. It really does. And you're like, what in the world is this? But you'll, it'll look, it'll come together. You're going to see in a minute. You're going to be like, whoa, what is this hot mess? And is she ripping it to pieces? No, I'm not ripping it to pieces. I'm just rough with my crafts, as you know, if you watch my channel. But um, it, it'll come to, it'll come together. Okay. We're just getting, all we're doing is getting rid of the extra little bits. Right. Get rid of them. But don't get, don't worry about the pine cone bits. All you want to worry about, see, you want just the needles to stick out, but you want to get rid of these little bits here. You see, these little bits. Like that, in between the pine cones. But don't worry about the actual little bits in the pine cones themselves because they're going to be hidden. All right, so that's all you need to do. That's, that's as clean as your die needs to be. That's it. Because all you need is your pine cones to be sticking out. All right, so next step is, let's move this out of the way. You're going to take your snips, your paper snips. Let's, let's let you look at the cards while I'm doing this. Because you know, sometimes I do things that take a while. So you can look at the cards we're making. If you just got here, this is what we're doing. Take your snips and snip away. Oh, I was traveling so I had my snips. I did not put these in my carry-on, but I did put them in my check-in luggage and I didn't want them poking through my bag. So I taped my front of my scissors. All right. So now we're gonna take the snips and we're going to find where to cut them so there's there's natural places to cut them see how these two are connected across twinsies right twinsies that's where you naturally cut them snip right now around the bottom of this pine cone it's it looks like a hot mess but that's where you snip snip around the bottom of it just sort of snip um your snip you just want the sort of the bottom your pine cones are going to be there snip see that's it. We've released this section. And then we got a little snip here. We're only just gonna, we're not gonna do this the whole time. We're just doing this right to this one. And then we can snip that one. Alright, so now that's all we need for this tutorial, right? Because the next time we do it, it's gonna be the same technique. You can get three little cool blobs out of this, and later I'm gonna show you my bucket of crafty goodness where I've cut a bunch of these. So next you wanna do, you wanna take this and let's just put it on something. We'll put it on a piece of this for a second. And you want to take your Wink Estella. Do, that, do the Wink Estella now. Always use Wink Estella for this stuff. It's going to just be so cool. Look at the glitter on that. Well, I don't know if you can see that. There's glitter, glimmery, shimmery pine needles. 
So you're going to take your Wink Estella and you're going to just sort of paint. I'm just, I'm just using that as a contrast. Like I'm using that background. This is called Early Espresso, by the way. Early Espresso. That's the color that I'm we're going to be cutting next. And I'm just sort of just doing that. Getting some sparkle on there. Get your sparkle on. Now don't color this part because we're covering up. We're going to be covering up all the pine needles. Or the, yeah, not the pine needles. The, the pine cones. We're going to be covering the pine cones in this section here. So you don't need to worry about any of the, don't bother using Wink Estella on a part that you're going to cover up anyway. Okay, so that's all. So you put Wink Estella, pine needles. Now, I told you that's, I didn't cut the foil part yet because I didn't know where to cut it yet. Because you don't cut this yet until you know which, where this section goes. So then you have to go, hmm, where does this go? And you have to go, well, there's three pine. This one only has two. This is one with the two pine cones. So see how they don't, they don't, like this has three pine cones. See how this has three, but this one has two. So actually this one just has two. So that's where this goes, right? Like there. And because it goes right like there, you're, you can then know where to snip. And this, so you're just snipping sort of snip, snip. And I'm just going to now go around the bottom of the pine cones. See? Snip, 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 snip. It's very easy. Snip, snip, and I'm done. Okay, so that's your bottom piece. Now you're going to take your glue, and you're going to glue the top piece to the bottom piece. And it's just fantastic because it has a shadow, and it has like this dimension and the shadow. Me and my shadow. I'm looking for glue. So you just take your fine tip Tombow glue. That's the reason I didn't use adhesive sheets. See, if you use adhesive sheets, on this part, then you'd end up wasting a lot of adhesive, not really knowing where to cut it. And it would just waste a lot of adhesive. Plus, I like the 3D look where not all the pine needles are like sort of attached. Oops, there's my piece of painter's tape. I mean, the painter's tape isn't going to hurt anything, but I should have got that off before I did this. The painter's tape. Oh, I ripped my pine needle. All right, that's okay. We'll put it back together. Humpty Dumpty, put it back together again. And, and you can cover up any mistakes with other pine needles. So then you're going to attach this to here with some glue. And it doesn't have to go like exactly in the same spot. See, something like this, and then turn it over. So your tip is, see this is, I think I ripped my pine needles a bit. They don't even need to line up correctly. Like they don't need to line up exactly, just sort of like that. Isn't that fantastic? And then you're just going to turn it over and like put it on your paper like this, right? And press it down. All right. So step, we got the, we got it done. Now we are going to now get the sentiment and stamp that. That's all for that. We need to use, I was just using, a, you could use a piece of Whisper White. But I just used a piece of the, well, you'll see what I mean. This one, hold on, I got a lot of glue on my hands. If we take the piece of designer series paper itself, you see how this is, this is designer series paper that's the back of our card where we're going to be putting this embellishment? It's very stark white. But the whisper white or basic white is not. Our basic white that you stamp on is not the same color. Okay? So... I wanted to use a piece of designer series paper to, to stamp onto. So I'm going to take the sentiment from here and I'll just stamp it onto the, the white part of our designer series paper. And I'm going to take, I already have it mounted onto a stamping block. We're going to use the Holly Jolly Christmas, have a Holly Jolly Christmas and real red. And I thought I was going to just use this piece, but it looks like we'll have to get a piece ourselves and then we'll die cut it. It's no big deal. We will then just use the piece when we're done. So we're just, let me take a piece. I'm just going to get a piece for the inside is what I'm going to do. Inside of my card. And I'm a very messy crafter, as you can tell. So we're going to, let's see. We can make this one five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. I'm seeing if I if that will be if that piece will be big enough. I think that's what I did last time. See what I did? 
I made my two pieces that I was going to use for the ins like one can be the inside this can be the inside of the card this can be another card base another card front but see how you have this piece left over let's see if that seasonal labels die will fit on there and it looks like it will so there's a difference in the weight you might not think these make these things make a difference for your cards but I want to use the same color white on the top of my card as as it's on the bottom of my card right have a holly jolly Christmas. So, if, said, if I would use this white, it's just not the same kind of white. So I'm using this white. But of course, this white doesn't have as good of ink absorption as the basic white. So you have your, you know, that's the only downside. I'm opening up the real red ink. I'm going to tap, tap, tap. I'm going to test it on my mat, and it's good. I'm going to go ahead and put it on there. And I could use my little silicone stamping mat. Okay, it came out nice. I could use my silicone stamping mat too to make it come out even nicer. I'm just going to real quickly die cut that same sandwich as before. I'll just do that real quick. And all I'm doing for that, just so you can see, is whenever you die cut a sentiment, always take your painter's tape. Always tape it. And you can also just do what I do is like make a lot of sentiments at once like I have here. So die, you know, when you when you lay it on your when you lay it on your plate, it's taped so it doesn't slip. Hopefully it doesn't slip. But remember, it would be easier I think to just cut a bunch of these sentiments at once. Right? And then have them ready in your bucket of crafty goodness and like here was one that was ready but then it got smudged. And then that's what you can do and you can just use those over and over. Looking for top plate the top plate, the cutting plate. Here it is. And I'm just going to run that through. You don't have to see that part. I'm just leaning over the th camera because I don't want to sh keep shaking the camera by moving everything around my table too much. So hopefully that was the right sandwich. And then I have my thin die adapter in there. We're going to check it out. Okay, looks good. So now one thing I did on this card, and I'm going to do it in the next card anyway, so you're going to get to see it, is I inked the edges. I don't need to worry about that right now. I'm not going to do it to this because I've already mounted this, but I, did, I do like to ink the edges, so I'm going to just show you how to ink it. Because I also like to ink the edges of the sentiments as well. So I'm going to take out the pool party ink. I don't think you'll ever find a messier crafter on YouTube than me. This is absolutely crazy, my table right now. All right, I'm going to take my pull party ink, but instead of dipping the blending brush straight into the ink, I like to tip my blending brush into the stamping block. So what I like to do, this is pull party ink. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to take a little bit of the stamping block and I'm going to put a little ink on the stamping block. I'm going to take my blending brush and I'm going to get a little bit of ink on my stamping, off my stamping block so that I don't accidentally and I'm going to get that blob. See that blob I just put on my thing. I'm that way I'm not going to accidentally put too much ink on the edges of my sentiment when I ink them. So all I'm doing is just giving this little dimension. I would also do it to the corner of the card. I do it to the edges of my sentiments. And it just does a little extra something. I'm going to use a coordinating color, a light color that will coordinate with whatever I'm doing. But pool party is always like a good bet for Christmas time because it's like a good winter color. I'm just doing it to the to the top edge too and the bottom edge. Okay. You might not notice it when I put it on a different color background, you'll notice the, the little edges. So let's put it on here so you can see. See, I don't know if you can see it. There's, there's a little bit of pool party around the edges of that. Then I put a little bit of bling. The bling I'm using are these wonderful gems and they are really wonderful because they have like a little bit of color in them little specks of color and stuff. So sticking those on there, sticking them on the corners of my sentiment. Get off my fingernail, see? Just like that. And the card is almost done. We gotta make our, well, once I make the, when I make the, um, the pine cones for this card, we're not gonna make them again for the next card. The next card, I'm just gonna show you the Stamparatus technique for the next card. Okay? So that's what we're doing. And you're going to take your dimensionals, 
And I also have a couple other little projects at the end I can show you as well, related to what we're doing here. So that's the Stamparatus. So at least we've, we've located that for the next project. Now I'm locating a dimensional. So maybe one or two dimensionals. Boom, boom. And take those off. And if I can find the card, I can put them on there. Okay, let's make sure before you mount it that your card opens the right way, and it does. And we're going to mount... And we're, we're going to mount the Holly Jolly Christmas and this pine cone. This is going to be our little sentiment down there. A pyramid. We're putting that on the top for contrast. And we're putting this extra stuff on the bottom. Okay, so now we need... It's really coming together. And now we need our little... I'm going to show you how to make these. And then I will actually then kind of like a cooking show where I have some made already. Like, I just want to show you how to do this because it's another cool die cutting tip, die cutting tips and tricks. So, I'm going to move the die cutting machine a little bit closer this time. So, we can just lay these on there. So, we're going to take our, we're going to still use the same sandwich. Keep using the same sandwich. We're going to go, you know, bottom platform. Yeah, the, thank you. I'm glad you like that, Sue. Okay. So, we got our, you know, we got our plate number one. We got our thin die adapter plate number two. We got... We have our number three, and we have another number three. So I've been doing so much die cutting that I've been trying to turn them around because they were starting to get warped. Now, this is the cool thing about this, these bottom pine cones. So the bottom of them, you're going to take, I'm going to show you just to take the bedazzling paper and how easy this paper is to cut when you have just big solid shapes. A lot harder, you can do what I just did, and I'm going to show you a whole background. So this does cut. You can cut this, but you're going to have to go through several times. And my trick my husband figured out is that it was easier to cut going this way, like using this side. But then you had to turn everything else around too, or if you have a pattern on your paper. But, I mean, it was easier to cut face down this way when you're doing this pattern. But I'm not doing this right now. I'm just doing these. What I'm going to do right now is doing this. So I'm going to face up. And... We're just going to go, we're just putting three of them on there. All we're doing is the outside of the pine cones. Now, it's when you, when you have big, thick paper like this, it's very important not to put these too close together. Like, maybe do something here. Do something like that. Because if they're too close together, they don't cut right. And that goes, whoops, I forgot. This goes down. I need, to, this is the top plate. Because, and you can always fill in the spaces and use these others later. Because these, these, dies they tend to lift up the plate the metal itself is so raised up so high off this bedazzling paper or dazzle here's like bedazzling paper specialty paper the free paper that you can get during celebration during uh, until the end of september this is free when you spend 50 dollars at my store if you put these dies too close together it holds it holds everything up and it's hard to cut so i just kind of separate them a little that's a little trick for you and then i have the adhesive trick for the top of these okay so they should have they should have cut once. I should have only had to go through once, but I'm just going to go backwards for good measure, right? For good measure, going back in this direction, and we're going to go ahead and test it. Turn everything over. Test it. Look at that, a clean cut, clean cut. So we don't have to worry about if it wasn't a clean cut, we'd have to turn it over and you know, get them out and uh, run it back through. So isn't that fantastic? This is, these make perfect backgrounds for your pine cones because they're dazzling and they're just awesome. So now you're going to take, now I'm going to use the adhesive because I won't be wasting any adhesive. I'm going to use the adhesive sheets. What are adhesive sheets, you may ask? They're in our annual catalog. They're on my website. It's just a way of making st your own stickers. So what we want to do is we want to make, what we're trying to do is this part. We want to take these three, one, two, and the, again, these, these two are exactly the same. Looks like I poke, got to poke something out of that one. And there should be a third one. Here we go. A third one. How come it's not coming out? Pesky little, pesky little bugger. So here's what we're doing. We're taking our, this is called Early Espresso early espresso and we are we are taking and there's already an adhesive sheet on here 
right? So what did he what did he sushi is? Is this. They come in they come in twelve adhesive sheets. You get twelve of them in a pack, and they are twelve inches by six inches. Six inches. Okay? So you're gonna take your adhesive sheets and you're gonna up you're gonna put them on. So here's what they look like. Here's a strip of those. Okay, hope you're following along. It's double sided. So it's it's adhesive on this side. Well, it's actually double sided. So if when I peel this off, right? We can just do another one if I have a piece. Let me see if I find a piece that's not. Okay, here's one that's partially applied. So I can go ahead and apply it to this section just so you understand the concept. So say I wanted to apply adhesive sheet to this corner here, but, which I'll do. I'll do for you just so you understand how, it's wor how it works because that's the only way to really understand how it works. Here, say I want to apply adhesive sheet to that little section. Okay, so you would take it and you're going to peel off one side. This is double-sided in here. You're going to leave one side on for die cutting, and this is double-sided. I kind of covered this in my butterfly course. Okay, so actually this, this is, I'm peeling this off. There's no adhesive on here. Now this is double-sided. I'm going to face it down. I'm sticking one side to my cardstock, right? Okay, now I'm going to put the little, okay, put these on the, so there's, it's all, it, it has it applied to the whole section, but do you get the idea? You stick that there, stick one there, stick one there. Don't put them too close together. So that's your die cutting trick. Always use adhesive sheets when you have little things like this to cut out. I'm just going to finish cutting all those out later, but I just want to show you this because it's, it's going to help for this card project and the next card project. Because the next card project, I'm also using these same pine cones. Okay. It's making a lot of noise. I'm rolling it through. And then I'll go ahead and go backwards. And then we'll test it. Okay. Now, flip it over. Is that fantastic or what? It cut all the way through. Now, check this out. This is so great. I love adhesive sheets. Check this out. I'm going to take this little, my little pokey tool. Oh, you can, you, by the way, you can get the dies off of there first. You can get the dies off first. You don't need to worry about that. But you can get this. Now you're going to take this little sticker. You're just lifting up a part of it. That's all you're doing. You just want to lift up a part of it. See that? Fantastic. Look at that. I have a sticker. Now, before you apply it to your, this is it. That All you're doing is putting this on the bedazzling paper, which is, you know, the ones that we made a minute ago. But before you do, you know what I'm going to say. Use your Wink Estella. So here's what we're doing. We're applying to that. I'm only going to do the big one right now because you'll get the concept. So here we go. Wink Estella. Always get your Wink Estella. Put your glitter on your pine cones. Okay, because the back is the back's ready to stick on there, but it's just easier to paint them when they're before you stick them. Now you're gonna stick it. Let's find something for contrast here. Something you can see what I'm doing, just in the background. And I'm this just lines up. So these pine cones, this is called Christmas pine cones. Look at that. It lines up exactly to these little ridges. And you have this fantastic 3D 3D pine cone. Because you got a double la you got layer and you got dazzling and you got it and it's pretty cool. So then you're gonna pop it up. You don't have to pop it up with dimensionals. You could just stick it right on your card like that. So let's see. Do we want to put it on dimensionals or not? We just it's up to you. You could do one with dimensionals and one one without. But oh, this one you could put another pine cone right there too to cover up this little section. So I forgot to get that little piece out. So let's see. We're gonna put that pine cone there. I think I'm gonna put another pine cone over there because it'll cover up that little blob over there. So I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two down. I'm going to put three pine cones on here. I'm going to glue this one down, glue this one down, and I'm going to pop the middle one up with dimensionals. That's what I plan on doing. So before I do that, always take this. Before you do all that, just glue, you, can, you can actually glue this part down because the rest is just going to be glued onto there. So you're just going to glue this onto your card with your Tombow glue. Oops, and I have extra little hitchhiker. Lots of hitchhikers got on there. I have, because I have, if you want to clean up your craft room quickly, then you just get some uh, tape, get some painter's tape and clean up all this stuff on your craft room. Yay. 
I love bling. I love bling. And then we're going to also add a little bit more bling after that. So what we want to do, and I already have a couple made. So this one, I guess I could show you my bucket of crafty goodness. I'll show you the bucket of crafty goodness as I, because I have so many of these made already. Here we go. In here. Do, do, do. See, there's a couple made already. So we're just going to use these two so you don't have to wait for me to. I, once you learn about the technique I'm showing you, you don't have to keep learning the same technique over. You basically are going to do that over and over with your adhesive sheet. Make lots of these. And you're going to, now, this is why I said, let me let, go back to what, you have to understand why I told you, don't worry about popping out all those little pieces earlier, right? Don't poke all those pieces out in, because you're covering that up anyway. You're covering up the green with this, and you need the cardstock there. So don't poke out. The more, the more you don't poke it out, the more you have something to stick these pine cones to, right? So you don't want to poke out that cardstock because it helps stick these. Because this, it's not easy to stick onto foil as it is to stick on the cardstock. So I think I'm going to pop this one up for just, not yet. I'm going to pop it up last like that. But I want to put this pine cone there just to see where it goes before I pop that one up. Oh, I'm loving this dazzle. It's bedazzling. Okay, I'm going to just put that there first. I was just kind of using that as a placeholder. Look at that. That one's going to pop right there. Dimensionals, dimensionals. You can never have enough dimensionals. Let's put that there. Sometimes you have to trim them, but these are these fit. Two of these fit perfectly. You don't have to trim them, but you can use mini dimensionals as well. And we made our first card. The second card's not going to be as long because we're using the Stamparatus. But we need to do some bling. We need some more red. And that's where I'm gonna, that's where the jewels come in. Because you need to balance a little bit of red. So let me figure out how I did the other one. Oh, I had this. Oh, because I had a gap. Because sometimes you do all this and there's a little gap in there. That's how I put the bling on that one. I made like a little berries there. But you could just do some little, I think this needs a little bit of red bling. You know, and that's why I'm gonna put those jewels around. And I'll just pop them. In, I think I'm just gonna go like one, like one here here and here. That's what I'm going to do. There, there, and there. So kind of decide where you want to put things ahead of time. And if you want them to be big or small, so I'll put a big one. Uh, small. Small. And small. Okay, so I'm not putting them in like I did for this one. But you see, you could put them, if you have a gap, you could put them in like that. But I'm just putting them like that. So that card is done. And inside you're going to put Something like this. You can just put that designer series paper inside for your message. And you give someone this and they're going to go, oh my goodness. You must have spent five hours making this card. Well, it's, it actually might look like it took a long time. But really, it doesn't take a long time because you make a bunch at once. So you're going you're gonna to cut, like, like I was saying, I was cut a bunch of these at once. Okay? So, and that's why I have a lot of these pine cones. I have a lot of these pieces made. So look at this. If I need to get a quick card... With anything on it, boom, this little section is just done. So now let's now you'll see how quick it is to make the next card because we're not going to make this part. You're going to have made all these ahead of time, all these pieces from your bucket of crafty goodness. So I don't I do need the I do need this machine though, because what I want to do is now the next part of this tutorial is I want to show you how to emboss a card front. So I can go ahead and lower this for a moment. And I can show you. Okay, there's my website. If you guys have to buy this and you can't wait. That's my website. This is pretty cool. So what it again, it's called the Christmas to Remember Bundle. Part of what I'm showing you. So Christmas to Remember Bundle includes these dies and this stamp set. The Holly, Holly Jolly Christmas. I can show you a couple of little other things I made with that stamp set. But you don't, you're not limited. If you just love those dies and pine needles, then you can use Thinking Thanks and Peace, my favorite stamp set. I'm going to use this with the Stamparatus. And then I'm going to emboss my background. So the next card we're making, so you got to see this card, the card we're making, and I'm going to show you how to ink the edges, is this card here. We're doing a piece on our embossed background card. That's what we're doing. We're not making this again. You already know how to make that. That was the long part of the tutorial. But I did it once in the white, and I thought, oh, I need to emboss the background. But I'm going to teach you this little inking technique on the edges, and I'm going to teach you how to emboss the background. And I'm going to talk about this, how I got my Wink Estella to be colored in another tutorial. So what you need for is your Stamparatus 
and my, my stamp's already mounted, so your Stamparatus is, well, not that you can't use a stamp for this. You, you don't have to use a Stamparatus, but I just think it's easier because it's such a huge stamp. It, of course, will fit on a stamping block as well. So let's make a little room. And a Stamparatus is like a definitely a necessity if you have background stamps like this. This one I just keep mounted. I use it so much. It's my candy cane stamps. But if you have uh, stamps that fit on a stamping block, you don't necessarily have to use a Stamparatus. But in this case, in this case, it's just easier. So for Stamparatus, this is the bottom plate, the bottom part of it. Okay. So I'm putting this right like this. It's just a little foam mat on my Stamparatus, and this is my. St I'm just sticking this on the hinges like that, and I'm gonna go ahead and ink it up. So. Where do I ink it up? Before I ink it up, I'm going to lay it down. It doesn't have any ink on it right now, and I'm going to put my card there. So what I need is a piece of the same card base as before. It's four inches by five and a quarter. That's always the A2 card base. I've already have this cut for you. So this is, part's going to be quick. You're going to put it down like this. You're going to put it down, and you're going to de decide where you need to. Here, let's put this card over there so it doesn't get in the way. And you're going to decide where does this need to go. So we're going to put that down, and let's see. Oh, it needs to go on top, right? I should, it goes on top because, right, we need room for this cool embellishment. So we're going to put this sentiment as high as the top as we can, but not too close to the top. And there it goes. And once we get it, and we want to make a lot of cards, so say, say it ends up there right now because that's the way it is. I just mounted it. So the next time, I'm just trying to find my painter's tape. You're going to put a little piece of painter's tape there. I'm just showing you my little, this is a Stamparatus trick. So next time, so I don't have to keep doing that again, right? I, first of all, I want to tape my card down. But secondly, I want to be able to leave this tape here. Actually, I want to put it like that, over the, over the edge like that. So then I'm going to pull my card out from under that tape and put the, put the next card right in that spot. And I can do this whole pile. After this video is over, boom, I'll be making a whole pile of these. It's very, very quick when you have a Stamparatus to make these cards. Okay, so I'm opening up the real red and what I'm doing, I hope you can see that in the camera because I can't really see what you can see, but I hope you can see this. I'm inking up the peace on earth. Such a beautiful sentiment. Doesn't matter if you don't get it all the first time because that's the best part of a Stamparatus is that when you push down Right? And it doesn't, if it doesn't ink it all up the first time, you just do it again. Okay? It did a really great job, but for good measure, let's do it again just to show you that we can do it again. Okay? If you want to make it even bolder. But it was already good, but when you do it again, it'll be the exact same spot. I'm not pushing too hard on that. Beautiful, right? Beautiful sentiment. Now, there's the little bit of tape that was holding it together. You can also use magnets, that's fine. And all that good stuff. Now, if I wanna do another one, that's the corner of my card. I go like this, stick that right there, right under that tape, and off we go. Make 100 cards at once. Don't spend a lifetime making cards. Just get them done, right? There, get them done. Beautiful. And I can't see if it's really good, so I'll just do it again for good measure. Tap, tap, tap. See how quick this is? I would do all this at once, and then I would do all the Link Estella at once while I'm watching TV. I would color in all the doves. All right, so this one's a little bit dry. I would probably wait five minutes for them to dry, but we're, it's okay. We're just going to, I'm going to tilt this camera for a second over here a little bit. Okay. Um, so I would wait for them to dry a little more, but... In one of my previous videos, I talked about dyeing your Wink of Stella, okay? So let me just talk about that for a second. This is my Wink of Stella. Wink of Stella is a clear glitter brush. But in one of my videos, I showed you how to use reinker. So this is my pool party Wink of Stella. I, I have it labeled with my label there. There's pool party Wink of Stella. So when I color the dove, and it's going to smear, but that's okay. My dove will be a little bit of pool party. And it'll get a little pink in there. It'll smear because it's not quite dry. But isn't that cool? Now I made a blue dove. Just try not to color. I mean, try not to go too too close to the edges. Because when you do, it just smears. 
because this is a dye-based ink. It's, these aren't alcohol inks. These, these are like the stamping pads are regular dye-based inks, and they smear. But it's okay, because then I got a little pink and blue dove. And the more it dries, the less it smears. But So now you got some bling on top. Okay, I probably should have done the Wink of Stella last after I show you the inking the corner technique, but it's all good. It's all good. So that's how you do that. So now I want to show you. We're done with the Stamparatus. I want to show you how to ink the edges. We're going to take our pool party. Oh, and I forgot to emboss. I probably shouldn't have done. Okay, let's do this first. But it's, it's all good. You would actually do the Wink of Stella after you emboss. Or, you, you don't, it doesn't have to be after you emboss, but you do the Wink of Stella after that's dry. So, it doesn't really matter what order. So, let me show you what I mean. I wanted to emboss the background, right? So, I think I inked it first, but then I embossed it with this, this embossing folder. So, that's what I wanted to show you. So, I'm going to again take the, let me close my real red. I'm going to take my pool party, my blending brush, and I'm going to just kind of ink the edges before I emboss it. Raise my camera a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to take the this and I'm going to put some ink on it. Get some ink on my blending brush. Tap, tap, tap. So we get the blob off and then start inking the corners. See? Like that. So I'm not getting too much ink on the corners. I mean, I'm not, I'm getting ink. I don't mind getting too much ink on the corners, but what I'm saying is I don't want the big blob. If you dip straight into your ink pad, you're going to get a big blob. And I'd rather get the big blob on my paper there. So that's how you ink the edges. It just adds a nice dimension. See how, see how it looks on that card, inking the edges. And like I said, I think I did it before I embossed, but it doesn't really matter if you do that before or after you emboss. But I definitely would color the wink. I would definitely not do Wink of Stella wet and then try to emboss it. I could probably emboss the one where the Wink of Stella has dried. I'm only just doing the corners. I'm not really doing the sides for this. I think I should have enough ink to get this last part done. Okay, so good. I'm liking that. And now I can shut the pool party. And the sandwich for the embossing folder is this. My grim. So we have, and it, it, if you ever want to know what the sandwich is, it gives you a cheat sheet on here. So you got plate number one, right? Plate number one. And then you don't need the adapter plate because you don't have any thin dies. You need, because it's an embossing, you have a 3D embossing folder. It's a 3D See how thick it is? It's a really thick one. I'm pretty sure it's a 3D one. Hmm. I can't tell if it's a 3D one, but it looks pretty thick to me. So I'm going to just go with that one. Regular embossing folders, you do need a plate underneath. So we're going to find out. If there's no tension at all, then we need more than just this top plate. Plate number four. That's all we need. But if there's no tension at all, then we also need a plastic plate. I'll find out real quickly if it's a 3D embossing folder. If it runs through and it embosses, it works. It feels like there's tension. You know, like some kind of... Like pressure. <clears throat> there you go. Let's see how that came out. Voila. Okay, so I think that adds some cool texture to it. And then I would do the Wink of Stella afterwards. Because I think you want to emboss first. Okay, and then I put the same exact technique. Um, that's the reason I did both of these cards together, because really I'm teaching you the same technique for both cards. It's just using different stamp set. Use whatever stamp set you want, whatever stamp set you have. You, everything I'm showing you can be for any kind of card. It doesn't have to be with these, but it just the techniques I'm showing you can be applied to anything. So then you take your same shaded spruce layer, right? So here's how you get the card. You got your shaded... So this is your basic white cardstock, right? This is your extra, extra eighth of an inch we talked about earlier, see, with the measurements? That's this one, shaded spruce cardstock. Same technique, background, eighth of an inch bigger. 
right? Same card base, real red. Same exact technique, real red. Pine cones, stick them on there like that. Okay, so it's the same, it's the same card, but just instead of stamping straight onto, or instead of decorating straight onto designer shares paper, I also used a little bit, the pine cones were a little different. I definitely wanted to use gold cardstock for this one because it matched the gold foiling in here in the expressions and in ink paper. But for this one, I didn't have to match any gold foiling. So I used the bedazzling as my pine needles. Okay, so I have a couple other things to show you and then I'll wrap things up. So I have about five more minutes in the video, so please stick with me because I'm showing you some more things. So, and I also never even got to say hi to all you guys. So really quickly, I'll do that too. And then I have things to show you. Joyce, hello. Oh, I'm gonna have to look at all these questions later in comments. Lara, Lorna, Deborah, Yvonne, Cynthia, Terry, Tracy, Diane, another Diane, Terry, Sue, Denise, Jackie, Nina, Sue, Tracy, Maria, Penny. I can't even read all your comments right now. I'm just reading your names. Debbie, Joanne, Peggy, Terry, Denise, and Sue again. Oh, she talks about her plates warping. Yeah, I know we have that. She's giving tips for that. So there, yeah, we should do a whole series. We did get with my team. Like, come on team, let's do a whole series on die cutting. Bonnie, Terry, Peggy. I'm glad you just found me today, Peggy. All right. What I wanted to talk about is this. I was showing you the holiday catalog. So, of course, if you want one, request one. If you're in the U.S., request this catalog. It started August 3rd, even though it says July to December. There's my website. We can request one there. Then, the celebration paper. What I wanted to show you is this paper that I've been showing you is free. It's free when you, when you purchase any items in any of my catalogs, annual or holiday catalog. It's a free paper, this dazzling be be dazzling okay when you spend fifty dollars this bundle I've been talking about this bundle is one of the celebration bundles it's just gonna be really hard to say but Christmas to remember bundle page 66 of the holiday catalog is free if you get a starter kit the $99 starter kit in your starter kit you could put this machine which is 120 you're allowed to pick out $125 worth of products you can put this machine I've been showing you a pack of dimensionals they're five dollars or maybe they're only four dollars but either way, you can spend $125. You can get the machine, a pack of dimensionals. The machine comes with all the plates and this $60 bundle. It's $60.25, I believe. The dies, those dies I've been showing you and the stamp set. And you can get all that with free shipping, a former paper pumpkin kit and all that. So, I mean, that's a good deal. If That's one of the starter kit options. All right, so this is the, the bedazzling I told you about. You know, running that through several times when you're cutting this bedazzling paper because it's really hard and it kind of gets like this. You know, sometimes you get the white pieces stuck in there. It's kind of hard to cut. This one's way easier to cut, so I recommend the gold. All right. Lastly, I told you I had to show you something that's going to blow you away. It's, it's me trying to make an entire background out of this. Okay, so before I do that, I have these two little things I made as well. I made these, these little... These are the painted Christmas paper. All right, I'm just trying to put something down behind this so you can really see this background. This is an unfinished project, but I was like, I got to show this to my crafty friends. Here, I'm going to put a piece of basic white cardstock down so my table's not so messed up. And I'm going to end with this background that took me forever to make, but it was worth it. And it's going to make, I'm sure I'm probably going to use it for three backgrounds, but here it is. This is what it looks like when you put everything I showed you together. Okay, so here it is. This is this is a piece of early espresso cardstock. And look at that. This is one background. And I used the bedazzling paper and the shaded spruce and the early espresso for the pine cones. So, oh here, it looks better on the white. Unbelievable, right? So you could use that as your whole card background, but I said to myself, self, where do you even put the sentiment? Right? And, I, and I'm like, hmm, this, because like this to me makes three really cool card elements, like three elements that we can put on cards like this. But it does blow you away that you can, you, you can make a background pretty easily in maybe five, 10 minutes. Well, because of all the gluing, it maybe takes 10 minutes, but you can make a, like a blow your socks off background. And then you could put a sentiment over the top, but then I'd be like, like I, I made some of these 3D 
with the with the dimensionals and I'm like, where would I put my sentiment? Like if I put Holly Jolly there or something, it would block up some of these. And then I, could, then I was like, I could put it this way, but then I'm still blocking off something. So, but anyway, that's just what you can do. It's just an idea. So I hope you enjoyed these techniques. I'll go back and read your comments later and questions. I did ask it if you had any questions. So, I mean, I, I w I'll see. Is the starter kit deal? Okay, I do see questions. Okay, I'm glad I can see questions now. I couldn't see them when I was doing it. She likes the tea bags. These are called diaper folds. I teach how to make these on my channel. So that was, um, let's see, Peggy was asking about this. Okay, the starter kit is a one-time deal, meaning it's just going on right now. Yes, it's a one-time deal. They won't offer this bundle again. It's from here. Here's the time period of this special, August 3rd to September 30th. If you join Stampin' Up! And then you get, after you join, there's like other benefits of joining. Like your discount, you get 20% off when you, on all products. And you can be your own best customer. And just buy products for yourself. You know, and then you get other things like pre-order before other everyone else. I've had this stuff for a month. Actually, I've had some of this longer. Because demonstrators can pre-order before everyone else, which is really fun. Okay, so... I can, okay, Terry's asking if I could do a segment on die cutting tips and tricks. I, I just kind of incorporate into my other tutorials, Terry, but I was thinking of doing like a die cutting series. And um, my next series is called Give It a Whirl Workshop. And that's on based on a set of dies, which I'm going to intensely delve into starting next week because I've just sent out the first set of kits. So you can check that out in the link. And I'll get, so I will, I kind of do all the die cutting tips in context with whatever set I'm teaching, but I can maybe do a series on die cutting tips and tricks because like here's here's sue giving a tip about plates warping she puts the clear plates under the base and cranks it halfway through and leaves it oh i like that okay there's a great that's a good power tip from sue i've done that with like a stack of books sue but not put it in the machine that's a good idea i've done it like put my plates under a stack of the machine or books she's saying she cranks her plates halfway through and leaves them sitting there and then it and then it like gets them to be unwarped that's pretty cool okay so awesome and i don't see any like burning questions but if there are i'll answer them later questions in ink and the thinking thanks and peace stamp set with the hope you enjoyed these cards i hope you'll give these techniques a try with whichever materials you have and that's all for now this is the paper chef have a great day.